Hey guys, Dale here, back with some more RimWorld tutorial content. Um, so today we're going to be taking a look at Map Designer. Um, folks have asked me how I came up with the map for um, for Thalnor, for our um, House of Stormguard playthrough. Um, it's actually the Stormshore tile um, that people are really interested in. We kind of had that forked river with a couple of islands up in the north. Um, that we build our built our medieval village on and so I mostly relied on map designer for that and then I did do some uh, dev mode editing of that tile so I'll kind of show you guys just a quick example of like what I did I'm by no means an expert in creating beautiful maps uh, I'll put a link down in the description of this video over to unknown builds uh, they are making really beautiful custom maps uh, pretty regularly. They have a long, a big catalog of maps that are available for you guys to use if you're interested in using any of those. Um, but today we'll just kind of like cover how you guys can use Map Designer kind of quickly to make some interesting changes to your tile. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at Map Designer. Uh, it is, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it has a bunch of different sliders and check marks and drop downs that you can use to kind of like make different adjustments to your map and then it pairs really well with map preview so you can kind of see what's going on as you're uh, making changes with the sliders and whatnot and we're just going to go ahead and like load up a brand new map uh, we'll just like do some default options here and then we'll find a tile for us and so if we want to kind of emulate what we did on Thalnor it would be like a coastal tile with river uh, and the coast would be northern so this is oh actually I need to reset everything um, so this is what this tile would look like in vanilla this is what this tile would look like in vanilla I think we're gonna grab that one and then I always like to increase the size of the map we'll do 325 um, I don't know, 325 by 325. I'm not sure if that's vanilla or if that's better map sizes, uh, but that's a pretty huge map. So it'll give us a bit to play with. And so with our little map preview up here in the toolbar, uh, we can select this button to open Map Designer. And then um, we have a bunch of different options here. So we could say, oh, hey, make this a fertile valley. Um, and it just like fills in with mountains. We could say... Uh, this isn't natural. That's pretty strange looking. Uh, canyon. Uh, I know that this is something that uh, a lot of people like to play in because it's, you know, defended on two sides of the map. We're just going to go ahead and reset everything. And we'll take a look here. Um, we can adjust the mountains, the amount of mountains. So we can say, hey, give us some more mountains. That's a lot of mountains. Um, we can say, I want these mountains to be really big, so there's fewer mountains, but the mountains that are there are big, uh, or really tiny, and that just makes the map, like, the rock formations everywhere. Let's go with bigger mountains, and then let's smooth them out a little bit, so it just kind of rounds them out. Um, you can also control where these mountains are going to be, right? So do I want them centralized? Do I want them down the middle or to one side? Let's stick these to one side. And then you can kind of see there's like a little icon here. As we adjust the angle, that'll kind of show you where the mountains are going to be. So here I would expect them to be kind of like southwest, and they are. Um, let's go ahead and shrink those mountains a little bit because that seems a little excessive and yeah that, i think that's good with messing around with the mountains if we go to the terrain we can turn up the water level so this should throw some more like water features on the map we can crank up fertility and you can see that like we could go crazy with fertility um and then we can also adjust the amount of rocks per map so uh, if you want more rocks, you can turn this up. We have sandstone, limestone, slate, and marble now. I think we just had sandstone and limestone before. Um, you can also crank this up, and it'll get, get us granite on the list as well. Uh, things, so this is like 
when you spawn in, uh, what do you want the density of these things to be? Plants and animals, ruins. Uh, you can crank up the number of ancient dangers and geysers. You can turn up the amount of ore that you're going to find. Um, so all kinds of settings there. The settings that I really messed with for um, creating the storm shore map was rivers and beaches and map features. So on map features, we can add a lake. And so that was one of the first things that I did was I made a lake. I made it a little bit bigger. Um, I shoved it all the way south and you can see it moving positions here. And then I shoved it all the way east. Um, and so we have that lake down in the bottom corner and that seems just a little too east. So let's move it in a little bit and then let's maybe make it a little smaller. So we'll do like 35%. That mountain is in the way. Let's flatten the map a little bit. So now we have a little island in that lake. Um, and then the next thing I did was I adjusted the river. Um, so we have one river here. We can make it a little thicker. Uh, we can make it extremely huge, right? So uh, let's do about there. And then we have different options for river style. So we have a spring. The river will just kind of like terminate somewhere in the map. Uh, we can do a canal, which looks really unnatural, right? Like very man-made looking. A confluence is two rivers coming into the map and then kind of like terminating into the coast. A fork is the opposite of that. It's one river and then it forks off into two. And then an oxbow should be kind of windy. Yeah, we got we got a windy river there. So I did a fork for the storm shore map. And then what I wanted was I wanted the river to come out of the lake. Um, so we can change the direction of the river. If we select this, um, you'll see there's like a little circle with an arrow pointing. Um, we can change that and then it starts to adjust that fork. Okay, what if we go all the way here? Let's... Yeah, that's kind of what I wanted is. Um, in the Storm Shore map, we had the river down here in the, the southeast, the river, I'm sorry, the lake, and then the river coming out of it and uh, going off into the sea. So we've made that change. We can also customize the river position. And so we're going to move this river a little bit east to get it. We're going to try and like um, center it into that into that lake so that it looks like it's coming out of the lake. And then we can move it further south and that should drop the fork, I think. Right? Yeah, so we have that fork. There we go. Let's go a little more east with it. Okay, and that's generally kind of like what I did in order to get the storm shore map. Let's let's get rid of these let's make these mountains a little smaller and let's make them smoother okay and then let's go ahead and we'll generate on the map and i'll show you just kind of like how i finished organizing um the map because i did go in and do some manual edits i'll show you what that would look like Okay, so this is what our map is looking like. We got our lake, we have our river that runs up pretty much north-south. We have this fork that happens that kind of splits the map. And what I, like, this is this is almost what we started with on the storm shore. But you might remember on the storm shore, we had um, a little island over here. And we had um, another kind of fork that happened right and so what I kind of did was I said okay this looks pretty unnatural over here um, and let me turn on map edge limit change because uh, this is kind of messing me up that we have a map edge okay we're back we don't have any edge restrictions now and so I did have the river on the storm shore map go off this way and off to the edge of the map but I was like, I want it to terminate up here in the ocean or look like, or at least look like it does, right? Um, so what I did was I used my planning tool and I was like, okay, we are, 
we're going to connect this uh, up here to the ocean. And I just kind of like started blocking in some spaces and said like, okay, all of that is going to be ocean. Um, and then the other thing that I did was I said, I thought like, um, oh, it would be really neat if there was another fork over here, right? So we could just kind of like say, okay, on this map, since we have some extra um, water here, we could just say like, okay, let's connect these together. And then let's continue that connection out this way, right? So just kind of like really rough blocking. And then let's change this color. Um, and we'll say we want to fill this in and make that island, right? So we will we'll make this kind of an island. And I think that means that we're probably going to go ahead and make this opening. We're going to connect all of that up to the ocean, right? So we have our little second fork happening right here. Um, and then to make those changes, what you'll do is you'll turn on dev mode. And don't need to turn on god mode. You're actually going to open this action menu. And if you type in set terrain, you'll find terrain tools here, right? Um, so if we do water, we can see there's deep water, there's deep ocean water, moving water, shallow water. Let's do deep ocean water. Actually, let's just do ocean water, shallow. Um, and we'll kind of use these markings to, to trace. And we'll continue here. And then this is probably just regular like shadow, shallow water. Um, it might actually be moving water, right? Set terrain. And let's say moving, uh, moving shallow water. So let's go ahead and do all of this. Create this like connection here. And we'll say all of that is moving water. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but just close, right? So we'll trace all of these in. And it's not going to look very natural um, as is. Let's turn our plans off. And so this is what we see now. And so this might be where we, you come in and decide like, okay, let's get rid of these plans and let's figure out how to make this look a little bit more natural. So um, let's do set terrain and we'll do ocean water. We'll say shallow. Um, we wanted this to be kind of like its own little island here. So let's add some more sand okay so let's set all this up as sand uh, like let's maybe taper some of this coast a little bit and make it a little irregular I just double click to get the single spots there. And so that's looking a little bit better. Um, you know, if we if I were actually going to play on this map, I would probably spend a lot more time just kind of like um, using the planning tool to try and make this island a little bit better shape. Uh, maybe we do something like that. Uh, probably turn this into water. Maybe we fill some water in there. And then on the interior of the island, I would probably figure out like, okay, well, where do I want soil? And then how do I taper that soil um, into, into the beach, right? And so maybe I want the beach to be anywhere between like two and four blocks back. So we'll go one, two, three, four, and we'll say, okay, soil there, soil there. And 
you know, I don't want it to be like super uniform. I want it to be a little irregular. So I'll add in like some extensions into that two to four tile back area. Uh, let's say this part of the beach is more beachy. So we'll just kind of like leave that as it is. Um, but then I would go in and set terrain and we would just set that to soil. Um, so we start to see um, some soil here that fades into a beachy area. And it starts to like little by little start looking more natural and natural. But that is in essence how I created that map for our house storm card playthrough. Um, let me know what you guys think of these tools. I'd love to see the creations that you guys create with these tools. And um, yeah, if you have anything else that you guys would like me to kind of like walk you through or show you, uh, you know, leave me some ideas in the comments and I'll get to it when I can. As always, thanks for hanging out. Until next time, have a good one. Bye.